Making ceviche is a fantastic lesson in the power of acid and uh, the effects it has on food. All right, so I won't Bill Nye out on you too hard, mostly because I, I couldn't if I wanted to, but long story short, acid, just like heat, can actually unwind and denature protein strands, effectively cooking our meat, in this case, our fish. It is V important to have a sharp knife when butchering anything, whether it be chicken, fish, a piece of chuck, or a life-size doll that you found in the dumpster outside your apartment. Today we are working with this gorgeous whole snapper, but any meaty ocean fish like grouper, halibut, sea bass, or even something like scallops would all work here. Just make sure the fish is fresh. Start by snipping off all of the fins, then it's time to scale. Alright, so we need to scale this thing, and to do so, we are going to use this boyo. This is a fish scaler that I picked up in Japan, but the back of a knife will work fine, just be careful. Scaling the fish in a bag like this is a nice little trick to keep your kitchen and counter and walls scale free. Even when you do this in the sink, indoors, at home, scaling a fish can get muy filthy. Nobody needs a surprise under the pillow fish scale before bed. They get everywhere. Do yourself a favor and do the bag trick. Make sure the gills of your fish are vibrant, the eyes are clear, the flesh is firm and bouncy, and it doesn't smell like the poops. If your fishy passes these tests, it's fresh. Snip and toss away the gills, then it's time to fillet. And now I'm just using a very, very, very thin, flexible knife. To fillet the fish, start behind the head and cut down to the spine. Work the knife down the spine of the fish to the tail, and don't be like me, do your best to make short, shallow cuts as to not mangle the flesh of the fish. I should mention that this fish came gutted, but if yours doesn't, simply make a small incision in the belly of the fish, then remove its guts and give it a rinse under the sink. Here I'm soaking the carcass in water to remove impurities, because fish stock is tasty, but that's another video. Use fish tweezers to pluck the bones from each fillet, and usually it's easier to do this when the fish is cooked, but we aren't going to actually cook the fish, at least not with heat, so just do your best here. Then flesh side facing up, remove the skin from the fillet by grabbing it by the tail with a paper towel and slicing in a downward motion between the flesh and the skin of the fish. Portion the fish into a half inch or about 12 millimeter cubes. Just keep in mind that the larger the piece of fish, the longer it'll need in the marinade to cook through. You can experiment with different marination times. Many Peruvian ceviche preparations call for the fish to be marinated for as little as a few minutes, which makes for an almost raw ceviche. But in Mexico, the fish is usually given more time to sit in the acidic marinade, yielding a more well-done fish ceviche. Again, the marination timing is your choice to make, but I keep the fish in the marinade for an hour for a medium, medium rare type fish. That marinade consists of onions, lots of lime juice, and the addition of sweet orange juice to balance out some of the sourness from the limes. Pour the marinade over the diced fish and onion, then cover it up. The fish should be flowing freely in the marinade, right? So if any of the fish is exposed, just top it off with some more citrus juice. Use the time in between marination to prep veggies for the final ceviche. Marination, great word, great word. You'll need some tomato, so go ahead and cut the green part out of the tomato, have it, have it again, and take the seeds out. You'll be left with a leaf-shaped, gutless tomato, perfect for our little ceviche. Go ahead and cut that into batons, then across for a medium dice, then rinse and repeat with the remaining tomato. This is jicama. It's a neutral-flavored, crunchy root that goes great atop many things. It's optional, but I like it on ceviche. After an hour, the fish should be ready to go. You'll know when the fish is cooked because it should look that way. The chunks should be opaque and pale, but if you're worried about its doneness, cut a piece in half and check it out. Strain the fish and onion mixture from the excess marinade and set it aside. In Peru, this leftover fishy citrus juice is referred to as leche de tigre or milk of the tiger. It's said to eradicate hangovers and act as an aphrodisiac. I'm in. Not bad. I can now tell you from experience that one of those things are true, but we'll leave it at that. To finish the ceviche, go in with the diced tomato, diced avocado, and minced fresh green chili. I'm using serranos, but jalapenos would work just fine too. Here we just have some cilantro leaves and stems. The leaves are for flavor and the stems are for a nice watery crunch.
Lastly, season with a bit more salt and olive oil. And I know olive oil might seem out of place, but the extra fat really helps round everything out here. Give it all a nice mixical, and congratulations, we just made fresh ceviche. Don't forget to taste for seasoning before you serve this, and you could also totally make this ahead by marinating the fish, removing it from the marinade to store it, and mixing the rest of the ingredients just before serving. I wouldn't do this all ahead or it could get mushy and weird. Serve this with tortilla chips, tostadas, plantain chips, saltine crackers, really anything salty and crunchy is gonna do the trick here. Wow. Here's a cross section of my fish, nice and medium rare. Thank you for watching, and if you dig cooking, learning about food, or just acting a fool in general, then you should subscribe. I bet you'd like my vids. Uh, we'll see you next week.